Hey YouTube, Mentored one here checking in again on our Darwin Pond experiment. Uh, it's 113,000 ticks or so. And uh, as you can see, there's a species, a creature here with the same coloration pattern that just emerged here and has taken over this. There's some stragglers off in here, but this looks like a dominant species. So we're going to take a look at these guys. We're going to magnify in. And they appear to be the one-legged uh, worm snake type of variety. Three segments, multicolored. Now that should give them the opportunity to mate with yellow, blue, or red. And you can see on the tip, that's the seed that they use to mate with. And this one wants to mate with, with the blue, this one yellow. You know, so they, they have preference for the color they're going to mate with. And they're not, they're not the most effective swimmers I've ever seen. Um, but they're definitely, from what we started with, these guys appear to be the most populous. Kind of lazy, floating type of creatures. The varied coloration certainly helps, uh, especially since they can mate pretty freely with each other without too much of a problem. And they may evolve into something more potent. Um, Looks like we have a mutant right here. It's got a green segment on the end of his tail, a little bit different than his buddies. So you see there's a lot of variation that occurs, there's mutations that occur. And these purple guys, uh, not the, uh, they look like they're kind of flailing around a little bit. I don't think they're going to last too long, but we'll see what happens. So what I'm going to do at this point in the experiment is I'm going to what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab one of these guys just to save as a prototype here. I'll grab this guy and we'll put him under our prototype file and we'll call him the let's see we'll call him yellow, blue, red, worm, yellow YBR worm, and we'll note the time that we took him, so 118k for the ticks, and we'll save him, so he's in our file permanently, so if we went over here, we can load him up for later, but we'll, uh, We'll save a sample file from here and we'll let this experiment continue and we'll see how this plays out. There's plenty of food, but uh, once they eat the food up, that's when it gets interesting because if there's too many of them and not enough food, the population will crash, which is usually when you'll see the most fit start to emerge. So we'll let this be for a little while longer and we will check in later. Hey YouTube, mentored one here. Checking back in with our experiment, and uh, this will be the last segment for uh, part one, and we'll, uh, the next video will pick up much later in the experiment. We're at 212,000 ticks at this point, and uh, as you can see, the same species with a lot of color variation has popped up. Um, the swimming has evolved quite a bit. You know, they look like they're moving a lot better. A lot of different color combinations as you can see greens and purples so you can see the evolution of these creatures really moves on and as they do certain colors for breeding you know like red is is closer to purple so the chance for a purple mutation occurring got a lot of orange orange is closer to red too so orange is a possible mutation mutated color for the red uh, yellow too as well you can see the yellow has turned to orange and these creatures over here the um, Blue has turned to purple in some of these creatures. They're definitely the dominant species in the pond now. Swarming around over there, but they've taken out everything else. As you can see, they're getting all the food into that corner. Um, my guess is their population will crash as soon as they, they eat everything into the corner, and then all the food will start to backfill, and all the ones that are trapped in the corner are going to die off. That's usually what I've seen happen. Um, so we're going to grab another creature here we'll grab one of these 
We'll grab one of these, uh, let's see, we'll grab one of this yellow. Oh, here we go. There's a real, there's an extra segmented one right there. We'll grab one of these longer ones. If I can get, here we go. And we'll, we'll call him the four segmented at 215 ticks. All right. So we'll save another creature from this time period. So it looks like the uh, the worm type of creature has one out. And uh, now it's just a matter of color wars and maybe length of who wins, stuff like that. We'll see. Uh, I've seen in past experiments where a two or three-legged variation will pop up and actually start to take over. So we'll see what happens. The multicolored thing is really interesting. You know, we'll see if there's any dominant color that comes about. Um, it looks like there's, I mean, the, the, the population is maxed out at 400 individuals. So we'll see what happens when they start dying off. The swimming isn't the best. They're not super fast. They don't turn really fast, but they are definitely evolving to be more efficient. And they're clustering, which is usually... I mean, they do follow food, but uh, some species I've seen that stay together for breeding and stuff like that. And that seems to be what's happening here. You can almost see more orange here, more red here. So, um, again, you, you see the, how, how powerful this uh, little lab experiment software is. You can, get, you can see a lot of evolution going on here. And if you want to tinker, you can come in and mutate. You can click on the lightning thing and mutate a whole bunch of the creatures and see what happens. Uh, you can play with the genes in some of them. You can add past ones. You can drop past species in if you want. You know, like if I dropped in a few of the more evolved species that I have from previous experiments in this pond, they would probably take over real quick because this is a fairly young creature. So, again, we're going to stop it around. It's about 219,000 ticks here. And um, we'll check back with the experiment in the next video. I'm going to let it run for maybe another 100,000 ticks. And... We'll keep up on it. Probably every 100,000 ticks will make a new segment. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you like this, head over to ventrella.com. Link is in the description. And you can try this software out. It's free. Um, and you can minimize it, run it on your taskbar in the background, and come back and check on it if you're doing other stuff. Um, I've let it run overnight sometimes. Some really interesting results. Save some creatures from it. You can even share the DNA files with your friends or you know, or, you know, whatever, just to be nerdy, say, here, try these out in your pond, etc. Um, little competitions, maybe, that go on. You know, here's my creature, it can destroy yours, etc. Interesting ideas, you know. If you accumulate a lot of DNA files, you can have, like, a battle royal with all your best species in one pond and see which one wins. All kinds of possibilities. All right. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you're a nerd and you like science, this should be right up your alley. Take care, guys.